book out there all refer to Jesus. And, and here it is that he used cannabis in his healing mission. Now, have you heard that before? Now, if you've listened to the podcast and you heard the previous episodes, then you have. But then the other 99.9% .9 of the world, the other 8 billion humans on this planet never have heard that. And so what are we going to do with that information? Welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, the show that inspires, promotes, and gives you a daily dose of inspiration from the people who have used cannabis to change their lives in extraordinary ways. Here's your host, Justin Benton. Welcome back to the Miracle Plant Podcast, where we discuss this miracle plant with so many names and how it's helping people in so many extraordinary ways. Well, hey, you can hear it's me again, <laughs> live in Ventura, California, or live recording anyways. You can hear the waves crashing behind us. I was down at the, uh, our store uh, in Seaward, Seaward Avenue in Ventura, California, and uh, as I walked out, I could hear the waves crashing, and so I was like, well, I'm going to go down there and record a podcast, and uh, it was funny. We've got some clients that we've sent out some newsletters, and uh, the newsletters were about our uh, cannabosum, so it's a talk topic we've talked about before, uh, but we had sent out, like, there's a part one and a part two to the newsletter, and, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to us at uh, info at... 101cbd.org and so if you want a copy of the newsletter we'll be happy to mail you one anyways so we had sent part two out um and the, one of our clients was like calling us like i need part one i need part one and then we so we, with our next order we sent out the uh, part one of the cannabosum newsletter um and you know we've had a bunch of newsletters on different topics but uh, we did two parts on cannabosum and if you don't know what I'm talking about, cannabosum is cannabis. Uh, and it's actually written in the Bible, uh, in the scripture. Uh, I forget how many times. I think it's like 50 plus times. I have to look, I have it in. I'm looking at the newsletter right now. I remember I, I mentioned it. But anyways, so cannabosum, uh, it stands for canna, which we all know means hemp. Like if you think about cannabis, canna, it was actually spelled K-A-N-E-H, means hemp. And bosum stands for aromatic, so aromatic hemp. And Sona uh, uh, Sula Bonet, who is a Polish, uh, uh, you know, professional who works with all types of uh, language and linguistic expert, um, did all the studies through the Hebrew language, which you know the first Bible uh, was written in, uh, in Jewish tradition. And so, anyways, uh, it, to me, it was mind blowing that we have this. This miracle plant that, you know, obviously helped heal my son and, and thousands and thousands of other families uh, we've seen directly. Um, and uh, that Jesus was using cannabosum in his anointing oil. And just to kind of a refresher, uh, number one, uh, Jesus' real name in, in Hebrew was Yeshua. And they didn't come up with the word Jesus until they trans. Uh, transcribed or they changed it from Hebrew to Greek and so they didn't have J in Hebrew and so that's Jesus comes from the Greek translation well also they they translated the word cannabosum which we now know in Hebrew means cannabis or aromatic hemp uh, which hemp is cannabis it's just high in THC uh, excuse me, hemp is high in CBD and, and cannabis, or in our country it's called marijuana, is high in THC. Same plant, one's high in THC, one's high in CBD. Anyway, so cannabosum was translated when it went from Hebrew to Greek to say, obviously it was cannabis, and then they changed it to mean calamus. So they literally wrote the word calamus in the Greek translation. They changed his name from Yeshua to Jesus. And Christ means anointed. And so the anointing oil that Jesus used and his healing mission uh, to heal the, the lepers and the paralyzed and uh, all of the things that he had done, the blind, uh, he used an anointing oil and his disciples used the anointing oil. And in fact, that's why they called him Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. 
His real name was Yeshua, um, you know, son of Joseph or Yeshua from uh, Nazareth. And so we call him Jesus Christ, which is, like I said, the Greek translation of the name Yeshua to Jesus and Christ is what they told him because he was the anointed one. Well, the anointing oil, we actually got the recipe from Moses in the burning bush. The burning bush told them 250 shekels, which is like a dollars uh, of cannabosum should be in this anointing oil, along with other things like cinnamon, and they should use olive oil as the carrier oil, uh, whereas we use hemp seed oil for our products, but back then it was olive oil. And so they used the anointing oil. That was the recipe given to Moses, you know, 3,000 years ago from the burning bush. But then the anointing oil was only meant for like high priests and Pharisees of the Jewish tradition. And then later on to kings and royalty were the only ones that would have access to this anointing oil, this recipe given to Moses from God. Well, when Jesus came around, he's like, hey man, that's not cool. Jesus was a man of the people, right? And that's part of the reason why a lot of people didn't like him, especially the Pharisees who were, you know, in their ivory towers because Jesus would sit down with Gentiles and Jewish, lame, uh, lepers, prostitutes, tax collectors, anybody. Everybody was welcome at Jesus' table. And that really riled the feathers of, of, you know, the powers that be back then. So he started using this anointing oil uh, in his healing mission and when he would give it out to uh, his disciples to go heal. And so, and back then the anointing, the oil was much more than, than just like putting a little dab on your forehead, like an anointing of the sick uh, in Christian traditions, especially in Catholic traditions. It was really, you could be submerged. It would talk about that your entire body would be covered in this oil. You know, they talk about in the, in the Bible how that applying this anointing oil for uh, kings and royalty uh, who you know, were the only ones that had access to it back then, you know, they would literally be covered in the oil. And so we talk about, you know, here it is, 2023, and, you know, I, I still come across major resistance from hospitals major resistance, um, you know, from some doctors um, and from people out there that are healers, right? You take the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm and, 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 they, and they have a complete wrong understanding of cannabis. And it's, it's not their fault per se, uh, but you know, now they should be doing their research and doing their homework and understanding, um, having this tool in their tool belt for healing and you know we see now that this cannabis miracle plant especially in the raw form uh, has so many amazing power you see this huge wave crash from here to help heal our bodies and our mind from from sickness and you know the healer of healers jesus christ himself used cannabis in his healing mission and you know we see it where people will come to us in the, in the last, last possible moment for a loved one, could be a child or a parent, um, and, and the, a last ditch effort uh, to use cannabis or to use raw CBDA oil. And, and sometimes by the grace of God, it will have a traumatic, you know, or a dramatic impact on someone's life, especially for even dogs. We see that all the time where people are about to put their dogs down and they start to take the, the raw hemp oil and the dog like bounces back and they've got energy and they start to walk and they start to eat and they, and they enjoy you know, more time on this planet in their golden years. And people will come by and drop cards off and, and thank us and tears in their eyes and tears in my eyes, you know, thanking me for you know, this product that helped their dog uh, so much or their loved ones with children especially. And, uh, you know, that's the mission, right? The mission is to reach a billion people by 2025. And I'm just trying to figure out how can I do it? How can I get this message out, right? That Jesus Christ, that everybody knows. I mean, we're talking about the most popular person on the planet. Um, you know, 
the most written about person on the planet. He's in every uh, religion, uh, spiritual uh, book out there, all refer to Jesus. And, and here it is that he used cannabis in his healing mission. Now, have you heard that before? Now, if you've listened to the podcast and you heard the previous episodes, then you have. But then the other 99.9% .9 of the world, the other 8 billion humans on this planet, never have heard that. And so what are we going to do with that information, right? Now you know. Go do your own research. Go look up Sula Bonet. Uh, you know, we have some blogs on it. You can go to our website and read about it more. You can listen to the previous podcast. But find out for yourself that Jesus, the healer of healers, used cannabis in his mission here on this planet. And obviously it was much more than just healing the blind and the lame and the lepers. You know, it was a spiritual healing. And, and you know, obviously much more in the, in the spiritual realm and salvation and the Christian beliefs. But could you imagine if 1,700 years ago they didn't change the word and they left it as is? Now, whether or not that was done on purpose, I, think we'll, I don't think we'll ever know. But because we found the Dead Sea Scrolls in the 1940s, which were the testaments of the other disciples, the ones that didn't make it in <laughs> to the Bible, like Philip, talking about how important the anointing oil was, how critical to the mission the anointing, the healing, the oil, the ingredients were to Jesus' mission and their mission in, in following Jesus. Uh, it's, it's, you know, some, if you read the context, if you read the passages, you know, they say the baptism was the cleansing. So for those that are of Christian faith like myself, the baptism, according to Philip, was really a cleansing to be ready to receive the anointing, the anointing oil. And just think about if for the last 1700 years, when we thought of cannabis, we thought of Jesus using it for healing, right? And we thought of like cannabis, even if we just thought of cannabis, the way that we think about aloe vera, right? The plant that you crack in half and you rub on for a sunburn. You know, I think my, my work will be done if I can get a billion people to equate cannabis and, you know, helping people with pain and inflammation, just like people think about aloe vera and sunburn. Because these are plants that were put here by God. For every illness, disease that you have, there is a plant that can help you. I truly believe that. I know that to be true. And it just happens to be that this miracle plant, this cannabis plant, this cannabosum, helps our body find balance and, and homeostasis which can help with so many ailments that we're facing in this world, this toxic world with pesticides and processed foods and refined sugars and, and unclean water and unclean air. You know, all of these toxins that are around us, that's why this, all of these diseases have popped up with these long names that no one had ever heard of before. They keep making up new names so they can prescribe you more pills you know, rheumatoid arthritis, neuropathy, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases, lupus, the list goes on and on. Did, did, your, did your grandparents ever have that? <laughs> no, because they didn't eat the junk that we eat. You know, our food system is the most toxic food system on the planet. You know, and here we live in the, the most abundant country with the most resources, financial resources, and yet we are allowed, we have allowed our system to feed us absolute garbage that is poison, you know, addictive chemicals, six or seven different kinds of salts and sugars with long names that with the whole sole intention is to get you addicted to eating them and they're awful for you and they're made as cheap as possible. So again, um, it's great to talk to you again. I've missed you, hope you've missed me. If this information is new to you, if this information speaks to you, if there's someone out there, a loved one, a friend, that could benefit from this information, send it to them, forward them a podcast. You know, I would love to, to you know, 
have you help us in our mission to reach a billion people. I think this information is a game changer. I think it could change the world. You know, the power of raw hemp, the power of this raw miracle plant, the fact that Jesus Christ used it when he was healing other people, that we should think about this plant like we think about aloe vera and not demonize it. There have been many people, especially in the United States, that have tried to push this plant down, make it a gateway drug, just say no, Cheech and Chong, reefer madness. And at the end of the day, it's a healing plant that was put here for us and has healed so many for thousands of years, dating back to medical journals in the Orient, 8,000 years ago, documented that this plant was used to help people, especially with pain or the afflicted. So again, I just wanted to pop on and uh, it just was, it was in the ether that uh, people were reaching out to get the newsletter and it's just a great topic, you know? It's a powerful topic. It's a, it's a topic that we have to like break through and, and, and have a discussion about. Can you imagine if the whole world <laughs> equated cannabis and healing and Jesus Christ all together? What would that world look like? It would look like a lot better world than the one we have right now. That's, that's people being forced to take pills that have side effects and are hurting people and, and damaging their internal organs and, you know, forcing them to take other pills. You know, the average Americans, you know, taking between four and five pills a day. And fortunately, after they use a great product like ours, studies have shown they go down to less than one pill a day. When you use raw, whole plant, cold pressed cannabis, just like eating it, just like juicing it. That's the difference. It's hard to find. Um, you know, a lot of people out there don't understand CBD. They get into CBD. The people that make it, they buy the cheap stuff. It's called an isolate, which is like a white powder, which is exactly like the the pharmaceutical model is you just cook it down to one chemical, one molecule, and the body has no idea what to do with one molecule, one chemical. But it's just like cooking down vitamin C to a vitamin C tablet. The body doesn't know what to do with that. But if you bite into a fresh, you know, orange that you just peeled, the organic orange, your body knows exactly how to process it and absorb it. And that's the same thing with cannabis. So when you bite into this plant, when you juice this plant, when you cold press this plant, it unleashes this incredible potential to help our body find homeostasis and help you with whatever it is you're going through. Pain, stress, sleep, severe autoimmune disease, uh, severe ailment diagnosis in general. You've seen it all. And so again, our mission is to reach a billion people by 2025 about the power of this miracle plan, especially in the raw form. And uh, I just thank you for listening. Um, at the end of every of these podcasts, we say heal the world. That is the mission. So those that are looking for a miracle like I was with my son and his neurological ailment that this miracle plan helped. Uh, him overcome, uh, that they can find this podcast, they can find this plant, that they can find these stories of this miracle plant and how it saved millions and can help you and your loved ones too. So on the count of three, we're going to say heal the world and get out there and do it. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, heal the world. Thanks for swinging by the Miracle Plant Podcast. Be a blessing, everybody, and happy healing. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. How do cannabis CEOs balance growth and optimization strategies? What is THCO, Delta 10, and CBNA, and why should you care about these minor cannabinoids? And why is an endocannabinoid system covered in medical school? Most people think they're up to date in trends in the cannabis industry, but they're about six weeks behind. Learn about what is truly next in the cannabis space by joining myself, Brian Fields, and Kellen Finney every week on the Dime Podcast and, of course, on PodConnects.